Hello, 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 hello. This Hi. is Britt with Truth Be Told Podcast. I'm your host, and today this is episode number 56, Signs of a Narcissist with Miss Farah. How are you doing today, boo? Hi, I'm doing good. I'm glad to hear from you. It's like I said before, it has been a long time. You got to tell us a little bit more about what you have been doing. Um, guys, if you're new to this channel, please like, share, and subscribe. Farrah definitely is going to let us know what she's been um, talking about and having going on lately, too. So I'm definitely um, excited to hear more about you. So please tell the audience a little bit more about Miss Farrah. Hi, I'm Farrah. Um, I'm a survivor of narcissistic abuse. And um, I have a YouTube channel and Instagram where I mainly talk about narcissism and healing and things of that nature. I love it. I love it. I love it. And tell us a little bit more about your channel. What made you start your channel? Uh, well, I started the channel by making um, a, a video of my life story and people really liked it. And so they asked me to make more videos. And so then people would request videos that they think I should make and different topics they would like me to talk about. And so that's how I got into it. Okay. I love that. I love that. So, you know, this is Mental Health Month. Um, yes. We are always reinventing ourselves and trying to heal so i definitely wanted to bring you on this month because i feel like your story um can definitely it you know it can definitely shed some light into some people not knowing what a narcissist is um so definitely can you start off letting us know what a narcissist is and um how can you see the signs of it or uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah, so a narcissist is basically someone who lacks empathy, someone who's grandiose, uh, a person who is unable to manage their emotions and so they take out their inner pain and rage onto other people. Oh wow. Yeah, that that sounds really deep. How how can you tell the difference between just somebody who's just a uh, arrogant pompous kiss ass versus somebody who actually holds that title? If you don't mind, and I, you know, definitely you don't have to share what you want to share, but can you tell us a little bit more about your um, relationship and, and how you overcame it? Um, yeah. So, I mean, I've dated narcissists in the past and um, I basically, the best way to overcome being with a narcissist is to leave and to go no contact and to sever all ties with the narcissist. That's how you set yourself free from the cycle of abuse. I love how you say that, but see how you say that is not really how it always goes. Yeah. So can you get a little bit more deep with me, Farrah? Tell us how did you get to that point? Because some people are stuck. Some people yeah. don't know how to come out of that. Um, so tell us like when you started noticing those signs, what made you get to that point to where you knew it was time to leave? Um, well, I, I became unrecognizable. So I was doing things that were unlike me, you know, behaving in ways that were not like me in an effort to cope with what I was dealing with. And it's very hard to leave. You know, the best way to really deal with that is to talk to other people, because sometimes you don't know how bad it is until you talk to someone else. And so when you develop a good support system, that's what's going to get you out and keep you out of that relationship. I love I love that you said the support system. So that's a really big thing that kept you to realize like you said you had to talk about it you had to get to that point to where you realized okay i was in this relationship and i needed to get out of it how long were you in the relationship three years oh wow okay okay and so for um people that are still stuck in it because some people really don't know when i was telling my husband about it he didn't know what this title was you know and i had to break it down to him and then i you were the first person i thought of i was like oh my gosh i wonder if she's gonna do it i wonder if she'll just tell us a little bit more about it because some people don't realize what type of person they're dealing with because you know a narcissist they'll they'll love bomb on you yeah. they'll woo 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 you at the beginning of it and make you think they're this way and then they start just chipping away, chipping away a little bit more of you. And then your confidence just starts going and going and going. Um, as somebody who's come out of that, and like I said, I'm going to still keep going to somebody who's in it um, because of this is Mental Health Month. What What is some advice that you can share to somebody who's stuck? And, you know, they might not have that support system. What What are some, you know, first steps that you could tell that person? 
Well, I would say to go low contact, you know, when you're with the person, you know, don't share how you feel because they really don't care about your feelings. So when you share how you feel, you're, you're going to be exhausting yourself, really. So keep to yourself. Don't react. And I, and I know that's easier said than done, but try <laughs> to not react to the chaos that's happening around you. You know, meditation, journaling, talking to somebody else, things like that, and sleeping, eating right. So those are some ways you can survive while you're in the midst of the chaos. And as far as setting those boundaries, why, why you're in the chaos, you know, narcissists, they don't know nothing about a boundary. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> how did you set those boundaries while you were still in that relationship? Because three years is a long time, you know, yeah. especially for our type of um, our generation. You know, we are like microwavable people. We want stuff now and then, and we want it to last forever. But when we're in it, we don't realize how much that affects us mentally. So when you were in it, oh gosh, I'm just, cause I'm just, I'm, I remember you sharing your story. Yeah. You know, I remember you sharing your story and I know we were in a safe place um, when you were sharing your story. So it just touched me to hear you um, through the pain and everything that you went through actually uh, persevere. You know, a lot of people can't do that. And so when they're stuck in that moment, uh, or that person doesn't know how to set boundaries. How did you set boundaries for yourself? Um, well, you you can let the person know what the boundaries are, like not to do this, not to say that. But of course, they're not going to respect your boundaries. So at that point, you just have to distance yourself from the person. And mm -hmm. it's almost like it's, it's hard, but you have to accept the fact that they're not going to respect your boundaries. And you have to go low contact, which is hardly speak to them, not speak about your feelings, your emotions you know, your goals, your aspirations, things like that. So you just distance yourself from them when your boundaries are being disrespected. You advocate for this type of, um, like overcoming this type of behavior by your YouTube channel. Can you give us some insight a little bit more on your YouTube channel and, you know, where people can locate you at and how did you... <clears throat> continue to bring those um ideas and knowledge to people so that they can know what type of person they're dealing with tell us a little bit more about that uh sure so my youtube is the narcissist whisperer or if you type in f mitten and i talk about um narcissist family trauma because oftentimes when we date a narcissist it really stems from trauma that we had in our childhood so i talk about that as well i talk about healing anxiety depression and basically your own autonomy. Mm -hmm. So as far as now that you're on the other side and your anxiety and your depression, if you have those, can you tell the people how you deal with those and have you overcome any of those struggles? Yes. Um, yes, I did a lot of journaling. You know, I did therapy for many years, uh, talking to people. I've also done like um, ketamine, psychedelics. So that helped me a lot. And just trying to, you know, live in the moment and be present in the moment and not live in the past. Because a lot of times when we're in these relationships, we tend to live in the past and live in our heads, you know. So coming out of that and sort of being more present really helps. Oh, gosh, it's hard to be present, you know, because we're yeah. always moving. <laughs> yeah. We're definitely like a hamster where we never can't stop and just enjoy the moment. Um, as far as with childhood trauma, I like to go back to that because a lot of that stems from a lot of things that we deal with. As you came out of that relationship, uh, what are some things that you noticed that from your childhood that you think played a part of you even just staying in that role if, if there was anything? I would say emotional abandonment. You know, like um, my caretakers were emotionally unavailable. So that made me vulnerable to get with a narcissist. That's crazy. And 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 now are you are you okay with where you're at? Like, do you feel like you actually completely healed, or do you feel like you're healing every day? Tell us a little bit more about your healing process. Yeah, I feel like you know, I feel like I'm healing every day. I'm definitely doing a lot better than I was before. But I'm healing every day and I'm, you know, always looking for ways to sort of unlock new levels of myself. So I think healing is definitely a life, lifelong journey.
Oh gosh, I think that too. I think we all are healing every day. Yeah. A lot of us don't like to talk about it. Um, some of us are healing silently. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we definitely are, you know, 2023, it, it's scary because we're still post COVID. <clears throat> so we're learning how to deal with the world after COVID. And then a lot of people don't realize that COVID, like I feel like it played a lot with our mental health. Yeah. Um, it definitely did. Uh, when you were in COVID, like the COVID time between 2020, what are some things that you were doing to help you besides the journaling and everything else that you said that you were doing as far as healing and yoga and meditation? Does that always work? And when it doesn't, tell us what you do. Oh, yeah. Well, I go running. Okay. Um, so when the pandemic first hit, you know, everything was closed and it was exacerbating my anxiety. So I started running like every single day. So I feel like the the greater the trauma, the greater your effort to reduce the um, anxiety and depression has to be. So it was an everyday thing for me. And then also there are days when you're not doing anything and that's okay too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A lot of people don't realize that sometimes it's okay not to do things. I think that is a part of the healing process. Uh, just to sit sometimes and be in your present and absorb whatever is coming to you at that moment. I feel like that is um being in the present moment um if there was something that you could say fair you know i don't want to keep you long today because i know that we could definitely go in deep into this conversation um as far as with the signs of a narcissist is there any other signs that i haven't said or anything else that you would like to share to the audience that's one question okay and then the second question is if you could speak to Farah, 14 year old Farah today what would you say to her <laughs> okay, so um, I think that one of the signs that's really important to look for is lack of empathy. Um, you know, when you're telling this person things that hurt you, they side with the people that have hurted you. I think that's one of the more damaging parts of being with a narcissist. Um, and I would say, if I could speak to my 14 year old self, I would say like it's not your fault because I think I blame myself a lot for the things that other people were doing for, to me. And um, I carried that with me thinking that I was a bad person or something, thinking something was wrong with me, thinking I was inadequate. And I would tell myself, you know, it's not your fault. And to not let what they say to you become your identity. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's a lot. That's a lot, especially for somebody now that can actually look back at young Farah and tell her it's okay. We're going to be okay. And just realize That is just growth. It's really a lot. And I don't know why I'm getting excited about it. But just like I said, just looking at you today, um, you're a ray of light. Uh, I know we didn't get to be around each other a long time, but I definitely felt the vibe when I was around you. Um, Good, positive vibes, good energy. Um, I don't know. It's I'm definitely not going to. I'm not not going to keep harboring on a narcissist because I feel like you pretty much went over the signs. Um, you're telling people how to avoid one, how to overcome it. Um, so at the end, I like to ask people random questions. So do you mind if I ask you some random questions? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. So y'all make sure y'all go like, share, and subscribe to both of our channels. Like she told y'all, um, she is on YouTube. She is popping. If you ever need any type of advice about a narcissist, how to get away from one, how to set those boundaries, how to know when one is lacking empathy. This is your girl. Make sure you go follow her. (laughs) But okay, okay. So as far as with those random questions, um, okay, so, okay, it's tea time. I call it tea time a little bit because, you know, we're always trying to reinvent ourselves and be better people. But sometimes it's okay to have a little bit of entertainment, just a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, of course. So if there was something that you have never shared with somebody today, could you give us some tea on that? Like what is one of the most embarrassing things you've ever did in public or not in public? Um, That's a tough question. <laughs> Okay, something that you want to share. <laughs> um, okay. Um, I'm not sure. I guess like maybe passing gas or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or nobody knew, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. So as far as um if you were on a date night and yeah. you were out with your mate, would you prefer a shot of tequila or would you prefer a glass of wine? Uh, a glass of wine. 
Okay, a glass of wine. Okay. Yeah. And let's see. Let's see, it's Mother's Day coming up. Okay, so what is something that you could share with your mom or to um something that you've never said to her that other young girls can relate to? You know, it's Mother's Day. Um, happy early Mother's Day to all the moms out there but if there was something that you could share to your mom today that you never said to her what is it that you would like to say um i would tell her you know i appreciate everything she did for me especially when i became a mom i think that you know uh her helping me wh while i was a mother you know in the beginning especially was very helpful to me and i never told her that that's awesome. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm going to let you go. I do want to say happy early Mother's Day to you, Farah. I hope you enjoy your day. Um, I hope you kick your feet up. If you want to kick your feet up, if you want to go full speed ahead, just definitely enjoy that day because our babies, they keep us going. They yeah. Keep us yeah. <laughs> so we are signing out today. This is episode number 56. With signs of a narcissist with Miss Farah. You guys have a good evening. Thank you bye. for having me. Thank you, Boo Boo. Okay, bye. <laughs> Yay!